Hi hey y'all, I started this once, I think I'm just going to start it again from scratch. Uh, today is uh, March, I think the 12th of 2015, and it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day in uh, northwestern Missouri. It's 71 degrees outside, 71 degrees here in the little house. Uh, storm windows are open on the doors and the inside doors are open to let that almost completely still air slowly float through here and it's beautiful. I realized uh, just before I came out here and set up today that there's a certain horrible uh, sameness. A certain horrible sameness. There we go. Now we've got some voice. You can hear it. I hope. If you can't, <clears throat> my fault. Certain horrible sameness to all my spoken word work. You know, I'm, I'm playing these guitars, but I'm talking, and I'm letting the talk really set the rhythm. I use a drum machine, but I have to set it within a certain fairly narrow bracket, or I can't think, <laughs> can't think fast enough to talk along with it. I mean, you could build one out of junk. It's a little tube on a base, and they got these rounds, and down the bottom of it, it's got a nail. And they sit that mortar down, and they aim it. So if you go like this, over there, it's about where those guys, those Yankees are sitting. And you just drop the round in the tube, and when the firing pin hits the nail, it goes bang, and it goes woof, and it comes down, and it lands in there amongst those Yankees. And the trouble is, you can take one of those things and run around the jungle at night. top of the people up there on top of that hill that you wish weren't in your country and then you can get the thing up and you can run. And by the time they're going to respond, you ain't there anymore. But like I said, I was kind of pissed off. They hit a buddy of mine named Jimmy O'Brien about 11 o'clock at night. They had killed him, but they tore up one of his arms real bad. about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I really don't know what time it was, but it was dark. I mean, man, you ain't ever seen dark until you've been someplace outside the United States and seen what dark is like in a place that doesn't have electric light pollution. 
right there, about five or six feet away. Caves in the side of my steel helmet, caves in the side of my head, caves in my whole identity. I take a shot over into that place where people talk about that some of them came back from them, some of them never did. You can't imagine how scary that's got to be. Here I 
brown skinned kid from someplace in the United States. Yesterday you were in the United States, the land of electric lights. Now you're in a jungle in the middle of nowhere. Things are exploding around you. You've been given this white guy for a boss, and he's laying on the ground in a pool of blood, and he won't answer you. The kid puts his hand up to his face, and he brings his hand down, and he's bloody. Okay? So he looks at me. He looks at his hand, and he says, Chances are I look like that. Actually, he didn't. It's the middle of the night, he's an American kid in this jungle and he's got blood on his face, he's got blood on his hand, he's got blood on his boss. Something is terribly wrong here. So I get him up and we hustle up and we go over to the medic suits, which is also my one of my very closest friends home and that man is still my very closest friend today. Day I got home from the hospital, this guy came up here and fixed my frozen pipe, and this is that same man. kid's name, he was only in my squad for a few hours, that I can remember. He's just a brown skinned kid from someplace in the southern U.S. shirt's all in tatters, my steel helmet's gone, it turned out later it'd been caved in by the mortar round. My face is all covered with blood, my back's all covered with blood. And my buddy Pat says, you don't look so good yourself, you know.
I passed out. About three days later, I was still unconscious. They put me on the paymaster's chopper, put me back to the hospital. About three weeks later, I regained full consciousness. just so fast. So what I did today was I changed guitars. I put my good old-fashioned C6 cigar box left steel guitar away and I got up my Hippo Cheapo Chinese Miracle guitar, my CCPOS. all guitar connoisseurs and people who have an appreciation of the finer things in life. Go out in the backyard, stick their fingers down their throats, and throw up because they have been exposed to a genuine rogue guitar.
got a little staples in you, they don't want you to take showers. Because they're afraid that dirty water that you're washing all that dirt off the rest of your body with will leak down into those holes with capillary action and will lay down in there and rot, you know. Doc said, you eat anything today? I said, no, sir. He said, 
do anything yesterday? So I don't believe so, sir. I was a bug sergeant, I was, I don't know what it was. I was 20. I got to Vietnam three days after my 20th birthday. And I got home on the day of my 21st birthday. So if it happened while I was in Vietnam, I was 20. your red blood cells, which tends to make you tired, but it has a really short life cycle, so it roars to life, it roars out into your bloodstream, and it eats your red blood cells, has babies which it lays in your tissues. beloved wife. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? I'm going to let you go here. I'll tell you the rest of that story some other day. Mm -hmm. 